Every year, millions of vehicles consume and destroy more than 250 million tires, whether for burning rubber or simply commuting to work. Vehicles wouldn't get very far without their tires. But surprisingly, they can't be made without this material. A white, sticky liquid that turns into millions of tires every year. But have you ever wondered how tires are made? We visited one of the largest natural rubber producers in the world to find out. The wheel has been in use for thousands of years, but the idea of putting rubber around the outer rim is relatively new. It was in the early 18th century when natural rubber was first used to cover wooden or steel wheels. Since rubber wore out quickly, its future didn't seem promising until 1839, when Charles Goodyear discovered vulcanization. A process where rubber is mixed with sulfur and exposed to heat and pressure, improving its elasticity and durability. Pneumatic tires could now better absorb bumps in the road, and adding tread gave them great traction. The tire is the only point of contact between the vehicle and the ground. Car tires have advanced a lot in the past century. Natural rubber is the main raw material used, although synthetic rubber is also essential. Synthetic rubber is made from polymers found in crude oil. Today, large and efficient factories with skilled workers produce more than 250 million tires every year. India is one of the largest natural rubber producers in the world. They've been cultivating rubber trees for almost 100 years. The source of rubber is a milky liquid called latex, produced in the bark of the tree. It's made of rubber molecules and water, and its function is to protect the tree from insects. To collect it, they carefully cut only the bark. Just a few millimeters deeper into the wood could kill the tree. Fresh latex is poured into barrels with ammonia to prevent coagulation before reaching the factory. It turns into solid rubber after thickening for about 10 hours. The flexible latex is pressed through rollers to remove excess liquid. The presses squeeze out water and turn it into sheets. But latex must be completely dry before use. So the sheets are smoked over firewood for three days, after which they can truly be called rubber. The methods they use haven't changed in 100 years. The natural rubber is then transported to the tire factory. This plant has been making car tires since 1972. A car tire is built by wrapping multiple layers of rubber around a metal drum in a tire building machine. Different components are brought to the machine, where an expert assembler cuts and positions the strips. Natural rubber alone is too elastic and flexible for tires. It must be hardened. Rubber is mixed with other components to give it the strength needed. A modern tire contains 10 to 15 different materials, natural and synthetic rubber, chemical additives, steel, sulfur, zinc oxide, textile fibers, and a black carbon pigment. These are blended under heat and high pressure in giant mixers. The mixture makes the rubber tougher and more wear resistant. Each part of the tire requires a specific formula. The result is a rubbery mass rolled into sheets to be processed later. In just over two minutes, a rubber compound sheet emerges, ready to become sidewalls and treads. Rollers apply hot rubber to both sides of fabric, producing a rubberized textile to reinforce the tire. This layer is needed because rubber alone isn't strong enough. But you won't get far driving with only this. The tire needs a strong inner casing. A polyester sheet passes through heated rollers, creating what's known as the ply. Two plies are wrapped tightly around an airtight liner, laid at an angle, and pressed together. This creates tiny air channels that help ventilation during construction. Thin steel wires are fixed, and the ply is molded around both sides. On top of it, steel belts coated with rubber are added, reinforcing the tire and protecting it from punctures. Now the casing needs its skin, the part that grips the road. The rubber sheet that was produced earlier is fed into an extruder. Heated rubber is forced through a die, shaped, cooled, and cut to the required length. Next, multiple steel wires are wound together to form the bead, the
the part that keeps the tire firmly on the rim. Machinery arranges the wires and coats them in rubber. Another machine rolls the bead into rings, sized to fit the rim. Now the tire is ready to be built on a special rotating drum. The two beads are placed, a layer of airtight rubber forms the inner liner, and the machine wraps the rubber around the beads. This completes the inner skeleton of the tire. The outer layers are built separately. Steel reinforced rubber strips are placed first, followed by narrow strips of rubber, carefully tensioned by a computerized system for a graded effect. Finally, the tread rubber is applied. Compressed air inflates the tire to shape it, and all the layers bond together. Making tread rubber requires three different rubber formulations. Extruders shape them into three flows that merge into one in a die. Colored stripes are painted on the surface as a code to identify the compounds during processing. The tread rubber is rolled onto the sidewalls. This creates what the industry calls a green tire, uncured and without tread pattern. The tire is placed inside a mold, which closes like a giant sandwich press. The process is called vulcanization, named after Vulcan, the Roman god of fire. Inside, at 180 degrees Celsius, heat and pressure mold the rubber and imprint the tread pattern. The time inside the hot press triggers vulcanization, a chemical reaction that transforms rubber from weak and sticky to strong and elastic. Excess rubber is trimmed, a blade cuts the tread to size, and after final inspections confirm the tire shape and geometry, it rolls off the production line. From trees to tough wheels, these rubber tires are now ready to hit the road. Like this video if you enjoyed it, share it with someone who might find it interesting, and subscribe to this channel with notifications on to keep learning.